Greetings. Greetings all. Greetings, beautiful ones. So I wanted to come on and do a live. I don't get a chance to do a live from my desktop very often, but here I am. Here I am. So let's see if um, how this goes, because, you know, like I said, I'm usually not doing this, but I wanted to come on and do this quick live. I I, um, I hope you're all doing well, uh, wherever you are, if you're in a state that has um, stay at home or you're, you know, quarantined. Um, Whatever is going on with you, I hope you're doing well. So chime in when you log on. Let me know you're here. Let me know what state you're in um, or what city you're in. If you're here in Georgia with me, what county you're in. Just how you're doing during this um, coronavirus time. It's deep. I'm sitting here drinking my, um, my medicine right because not all medicine comes in a pill bottle so i made yesterday i made some so i juiced some juice using my my uh slow masticator which i love i have different types of juices y'all you know so sometimes i blend and sometimes i extract right and then sometimes i use it during the the um the the fast juicer and sometimes the slow juicer which makes a difference i'll do another video on that one day maybe i don't know anyway this is carrot apple celery and then it has some green power in it i posted a picture of it last night now you might be saying well why does it look that color i don't know if you can see the color of it right it looks a little er, 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 er. and i don't know if you're leaving me comments because i can't actually i can't actually see comments this see this is the thing when you use a different medium um than normal okay anyway i think i have the comments open so anyway this has that's what's in this one but then you might be wondering why is it this color i also added chlorophyll and I also added, um, I told you I added the green magma and I think I added like some celery juice, celery um, powder. Um, anyway, mixed all of that up. And so I know the question you might have is like, how does it taste? It's good. Let me tell you, anytime you use carrots or apples, if you add that to your juice, you're going to get a sweeter taste, right? And depending on what kind of carrot you use, you might, you know, get a sip. Anyway, that's not why I asked you to come. Oh, hey, Hollis. Yes. Hey, fellow Ashram friend. It's time, Hollis. We have to book that trip. It's time. So this is a great video for you too, Hollis. Hey, Hollis. Let me see who was on. Hey, Jazzy, Tamara, Caprice, Nadine. Hey, Rev. And JJ. Oh, JJ. Okay. JJ. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about what, you know, we as small business owners, um, because, you know, I know they released the stimulus package. I need to look at it to see what's in it for small business owners like me and like some of you who are small business owners with one, two, three employees, right? There's when they're identifying small business owners, they're talking about people under 500 employees, right? That's not me. That's not you. And for a lot of us, we have businesses that are touch based. Um, or we're appointment based and this pandemic has really impacted business but I believe wholeheartedly in finding the blessing what I call the blessing in disgust right instead of the blessing in disguise which is the phrase you may have heard and that is looking at the situation and trying to figure out okay how can I use this to work for me because at the end of the day we have to keep moving, right? We have to keep going forward. My business have, has been greatly impacted. A lot of my work is one-on-one uh, -on -one work with clients, but what I have done 
is which is some of the stuff I'm going to share with you in a second is um, really taking this time to figure out you know how I want to make shifts in in my business which is what I wanted to do anyway so this is the universe supporting that good okay so I came up with three tips because these are the things that I'm doing and I'm hoping you'll be able to see them because sometimes this is okay so what can we do so the first one I want to cover is the self-care so take this time to really really do self-care as a, a CEO of a small business listen you know um, one of my favorite motivational speakers says you know um, Eric Thomas says that everybody wants to be a beast but nobody wants to hunt okay what does that mean that means that you look at the you know people look at the 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 parts that you see on the surface of what it means to own your business and i mean work for yourself like you know really work for yourself and and be able to quit your job and go work for yourself but when you do that means every single dime that comes in the door has come from your efforts and your labor every listen did, every single dime has come from your efforts and your labor okay now if you've done if you've been doing it long enough the efforts and labor you're not always laboring the same right because eventually we want to work smarter and not harder okay and the life that I really want to create in my business is a work from anywhere life I have a stable office but I want to work from anywhere life so that in these time kind of times this is what you know I can work from anywhere so let me put this back up again just to say self-care is a big part but we take that for granted but as a small business owner you really can't take self-care for granted because if you run your business and you are the CFO the CEO and the COO and the practitioner of your business hello somebody if you are all of those things then you need to um, you need to be well because guess what when you stop business stops and when business stops the bank account the zeros start going down and we can't have that right also more importantly um, people stop being served by your genius so we can't have that because the people out here are looking for the healing so self-care really use this time to figure out what where your gaps in self-care have been you know what kinds of things do you need to restart during this time of of you know quarantine and stay at home and 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 you know being with yourself and figuring out what's next for your business as it relates to your wellness um, so that's one the second thing Oh, and I love this one, right? I mean, this is typical Aquarius of me. And that is fill your knowledge gaps. You know, take this time where we don't always have time. You know, you should, if you are claiming to be an expert in your business, that is not a static point. It's not like you get to the point of being an expert. And then you don't do you don't do that anymore right I see some of you who are on here like Jazzy and Franchet who are master Franchet is a master loctician what that means is that when Franchet learned how to do locks and natural hair she kept going right she kept teaching herself she didn't just become proficient at it she can became a master at it um, it's same thing with with Jazzy and the and on all of the work that she does she does several different things um, dr. Danny when you become proficient these are people who do not just uh, stop at proficiency but mastery means you have to feel your knowledge gaps you know now is the time when business has slowed down take this time to do some reading purchase some books or get some books and, and read some of the books that you have on your shelf did you like this count up here I have you can't see it but this is where my bookshelf is there's some books up there I want to read again I've read them but I want to read them again because as I evolve as a CEO my knowledge base and the way I digest and collapse information changes take this time oh here's a good one take this time to learn what automation what ways you can automate business for yourself 
for your business? What ways can you automate business, make automation a part of your business growth um, in 2020 and beyond? Because listen, if you have not started figuring out how to automate your business, um, I'm telling you now that's a gap. And I don't care what kind of service you provide, but you want to have a residual and passive income element to your business. So whether that be online courses, um, whether that be merch, right? Where you set up a store, if you're an artist, if you're selling small pieces of your artwork, or if you're that's not what you're into, if you're a if you are into hair care, maybe it's doing products, maybe it's teaching classes to other people who want to know how to do what you do. And listen, don't wait to teach a class online. Don't wait for the perfection of a class, right? Because I'm telling you, sometimes we make things far more complex than they need to be. And the general public who is wanting to learn how to do what you do is not looking for the complex version. They're, they're not looking for the Emory degree of what you do. They want to take a class where they can get a basic understanding and introduction into what you do. And so if that's teaching class, if that's writing grants, if that is, you know, whatever that is that you do, if it's helping people overcome traumas, you know, do a three-part class on how to soar in uncertainty. Okay, don't do that one because that's my class. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm watching you. Okay. Okay. Learn to do a three part class on how to soar in uncertainty. Do a class on meditation. I'm going to be doing a class on meditation soon. Content marketing has to be a part of what you do, what we do now in this, in this digital age, right? This is what we have, how we have to evolve our businesses. So you don't have just one aspect. So for me, I have, I meet with clients one-on-one. -on -one. I do individual coaching and counseling. I do group coaching and counseling. I do workshops. I do, um, I do trainings for organizations on diversity and inclusion. I'm a mediation specialist for advocacy and groups that do groundwork activism. I also do a lot of nonprofit work as many years as a CEO for a nonprofit um, has, has, has allowed, afforded me some mastery. But let me tell you, this is what I mean about the difference between mastering information and becoming proficient. I decided if I'm going to help organizations uh, with their nonprofit, one of the things I went to do is I went on the IRS website for nonprofits and I downloaded, it's about this thick, <laughs> the uh, information they put out. They put out some really good information, that, uh, information they put out on, um, on nonprofits. And I read the whole thing. The whole thing. Why did I do that? Because I want to create the kind of security for the people who come to me to say, I did that so you don't have to. Then you don't have to hire me. You can go read it yourself. Good luck with that. Have a good time at it, right? But also, like, I'm also, I take classes on trauma so that I'm continuing my knowledge base so that when I put my name out there and I put the fee on on my services i'm doing that because i have mastered the information so omeka says hey omeka good to see you exactly now is the time to take our knowledge and skill online absolutely and there are wonderful resources for that some that are budget friendly you can go you know, at wherever you want to go, right? You can go wherever you want to go. There are some that are really budget friendly. Like, for example, I'm going to give you some examples. So get a pen, get a pen, right? <laughs> but there's a, a website, uh, podia.com. There's teachable.com. These are places where you can place your online learning. Now, I, I, again, I want to go back to keep it simple, Keep it simple. You do not have, if you don't have the budget right now, you're like, Imani, look, I went on Podia, it's $97. Teachable is $120 per month to hold my courses. And look, I always say this, it, you know, business is an investment. So you are always investing in your business. That's why I say when you price yourself for your business, make sure you're pricing, not just for that one service, but understanding 
the cost of doing business. What does it cost to actually do your business and how well mastered are at you or are you at what you do, right? So you can do that, but you can also it say you don't want to do Podia or you don't you don't you can't right now start up at $120 a month. All right. Well, then there are ways you can do this stuff by using YouTube and the private the private uh, feature on videos on your YouTube channel. Create a YouTube channel. I'm going to tell you something. Go to my YouTube page right now and you will find that I I went from, I set a goal at the beginning of 2019. I had about, I don't know, 120 subscribers, maybe, maybe 120. And I set a goal. And by the top of 2020, I hit a thousand subscribers. Why does that matter? It matters because when you reach that level of subscribers, new features open up to you as a business. So these are all things that you can do what? When you, now is the time, fill your knowledge gaps. And if you think you don't have any knowledge gaps in your business, well, that's your first problem. <laughs> that's your first problem. If you think you have landed on all you need to know, and I mean, maybe, you know, look, if you're at the seven figure point and you're like, Imani, this is all I want to know, do you, okay? I'm here for the people, for those of us, for those people like me who are continuing to evolve their business because I want to retire members of my family. I want to leave a legacy. That's just me, okay? Hey, Brenda. Hey, Talessa. Hey, Chris. Hey, Beverly. So then the, then in here, so what we have online learning, collapsing your 2019 data. Okay. Oh my goodness. This one is really important for businesses. We, learn how to be able to call out the numbers of your business, right? You should be able to call. If I ask you as a business owner, what are your numbers? What was your income? What's your profit and loss? What did you, what, uh, you know, what were your expenses versus your income? That's your profit and loss, right? Where, what is your um, your uh, budget versus actual? Um, how many, what is your social media reach? Like you should be able to give someone wanting to invest in your business or maybe somebody who wants to market with you, what your social media reach is. How many, how many, uh, you know, how many followers do you have on all of your social media platforms? And listen, don't, it, what's important is to do your platforms well. If you only have one, that's fine. Do it well. Have a strategy, have a social media media plan and strategy. For most of you who follow me, you know that I post something on content every single solitary day. I post a motivational thing. Now, I'm not I'm not making those up every day. Sometimes I sit on a Sunday and I just create about 10, 12 of them, and then that way I can go. So that's my thing. Some people do videos every day. I also do videos, but I put them in a certain place. You want to have a gate, an entry point for clients in multiple entry points. So you have people who can follow you and for free, they can get certain things because you're, that's your content marketing. This is, you know, staying present. It's listen, it might be a pain, but this is what we do and we have to do in this digital age. At some point you get to a point where you can hire someone who this is their job to come on and do this is why. People have jobs where this is all that they do. But you should be able to give your numbers. You should be able to say, I have 20,000 social media uh, um, reach, and here's where this, it, thank you, Omeka. Aw. And um, uh, you, sh you should have a social media reach um, that you know what that is. Right, you'll be you're able to call it out. I have five thousand Facebook friends. I have, I mean, followers. I have, um, you know, a thousand YouTube followers. I have, you know, uh, you know, you whatever your numbers are, you should be able to call them out and know what those numbers are. Okay. Um, right now in my client base, I have ninety seven active uh, 97 clients in my uh, active client base. These are clients that are I've seen one-on-one, -on -one, either through video or through um, individual appointments uh, in the last three years. Some of them are, uh, 
you know, are not, are not active in this moment, but these, this is a, a different kind of base. These are people that sometimes I don't even have any access, don't even have access to me on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, right? So you have different entry points for all your clients. Some people, you want to develop a product where people can access you uh, for free, and then people can access you at a at an entry point. And then you have high end, like I have high end programs. You'll probably never see me uh, post on on Facebook because that's not that has shown and proved over time. I've shown that that's not where that client comes from. Okay. So I'm just telling you, now, these are things I could go into detail about at another time if people are interested in, in, in doing something separate uh, where we really hone in on these things. I'd be happy to, to share what I know, right, to share the things that I've learned and what, what's been proven for me. I am now in the point in business, I was able to get to a point in business where I earn more um, now in business than I did when I was working for someone else. That's a great place. Um, but it also comes with other risks too, right? Like, you know, you got to carry insurance. You know, we, you come through a pandemic. It's not about can I keep my job? It's how do I still make money, right? Um, because my vision is about serving the people. But uh, Walton still like, they like cash. I tried to send them some love one day and they sent it back. And they was like, we going to need cash for the lights <laughs> right? the last thing on what to do with this time is visioning and goal setting set what are you what are your written goals do you have a strat plan for uh 2020 you should have a strat plan that you're working for one and two years out in your business what are, and if you don't have an extensive strat plan just set about set six goals for your business three priority goals for your business for the next year you know like like i just told you one of mine was to set the goal for 2019 to get to 2020 i wanted to have a thousand youtube subscribers so that i can do some different things with youtube um you know there's all kinds of things i have other goals for 2020 i have a full strat plan but you know it's all about figuring out you know, how as a small business owner, I'm saying a really small business owner, one, two, three employees, or just you, or you're just starting up, whatever it is, um, how do you really use this time where business has changed that um, so that you can still, you know, manifest your vision? Because listen, at the end of the day, uh, I, change is always coming. Right. So so don't we don't have to be surprised when change comes, because guess what? Change is always coming. It's always coming. And so what be prepared means, you know, the, the, the time where we worked in an environment like our grandparents, like my grandparent worked. My grandfather worked for a company like all, all his life and he retired from that company. And that was that. Right. That luxury doesn't really exist to us in the same way anymore. We have to be building in a different way. If you are called to reach the masses and you know that you know that you know you are called to reach the masses. See, let me just say this. <laughs> you know, owning a business that's called, a consultant business called to reach the masses, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. And it, but if you are truly called to do what you do, then this, not a COVID-19, nothing will stop you. Because to stop is a spiritual death. Woo! To stop is a spiritual death. Anyway, that is my uh, little touch base with you today. Um, I'm going to get back to work. I have so I have plenty of work to be doing today. Plenty of work to do. So stay safe. I wish you well. I wish you peace during this time. And know that I am always here for you. Ak Ujasanet. Peace.